It's been referred to as life after R134A, or more technically, it's the replacement for R134A refrigerant, which has been used in vehicles since 1996. R1234YF is a synthetic HFO refrigerant, co-developed by DuPont and Honeywell as a successor to R134A for automotive air conditioning applications. From a service and repair point of view, R1234YF has similar thermal properties to R134A, meaning there are only minor system differences. This also means that any faults can be diagnosed using similar methods. R1234YF is a hydrofluoroalphan, or HFO refrigerant. These are composed of hydrogen, fluorine and carbon and contain at least one double bond between the carbon atoms. Due to its composition, we are assured by the manufacturers that R1234YF does not damage the ozone layer and has a minimal global warming impact. In fact, the manufacturers of this refrigerant state that its global warming potential is ultra low, with a rating of around one. This means that if one kilogram of R1234YF were accidentally released to the atmosphere, it has a significantly lower greenhouse effect than a kilogram of carbon dioxide. For comparison, HFC R134A has a GWP of 1430, with CFC R12 sitting at nearly 10,900. So, it's far better for the environment if accidentally released to the atmosphere, but does it cool the vehicle as well as R134A? When we look at the specifications for a vehicle equipped with R1234YF, and the same one using R134A, we can see that the refrigerant capacities are very similar. R1234YF has a lower boiling point of minus 29 degrees Celsius, compared with R134A's minus 26 degrees Celsius. A lower boiling point equates to more efficient heat removal characteristics. High and low side pressures are very similar between R134A and 1234YF, so diagnosis using a manifold set will be familiar to those used to dealing with HFC refrigerants. There's been some negative publicity towards the flammability of R1234YF, so here are the facts. According to a material safety data sheet supplied by a recognised refrigerant manufacturer, R1234YF has an A2L mild flammability rating with a self-ignition temperature of around 410 degrees Celsius. When compared with a leading manufacturer of R134A with a non-flammable rating and no self-ignition point, we can see why it looks so bad on paper. But in all honesty, the relatively small amount of refrigerant used in automotive applications poses a minimal risk to the vehicle and its occupants. The system hardware is essentially the same, with the addition of an inline heat exchanger and some different service port connections. The IHX is a liquid to vapour heat exchanger with one inner and one outer chamber. When operating, Hot liquid refrigerant is pushed from the condenser and through the centre tube on its way to either a fixed orifice or TX valve. The inner tube of the IHX is surrounded by cool refrigerant vapour, returning to the compressor from the evaporator. The condenser's job in any AC system is to remove some heat from the refrigerant to allow a change of state. At the exit, unfortunately, it's still pretty warm. The IHX moves heat energy out of the hot liquid refrigerant to the cooler, low pressure vapour. With an already cooler refrigerant entering the expansion device, the system is utilising cooling capacity that is otherwise wasted, improving overall AC efficiency. Another benefit of the IHX is that when vapour normally exits the evaporator, it contains tiny droplets of liquid. Although not enough to damage the compressor, it does reduce efficiency. 
By absorbing heat energy from the inner flow of hot liquid refrigerant, any droplets get one more chance to evaporate before they get to the compressor. This reduces the crankshaft torque or the battery energy required to operate the compressor, which results in lower emissions and improved fuel economy. To prevent cross-contamination and incorrect filling of a vehicle fitted with an R1234 YF refrigerant system, different size service ports are used. Both high and low side ports are larger in size and will not accept the old 134A quick couplers. New R1234 YF systems are also fitted with a redesigned evaporator that's stronger and less likely to leak. So if you need to replace one, make sure it complies with the SAE J2842 standard. If your shop specialises in air conditioning service, or you undertake AC repair as part of your general work mix, then you really need to invest in some new equipment. The general requirement for any R1234 YF equipment is that they are ignition proof. This means that they provide a spark-free work environment. We can also refer to them as A2L compliant devices. R1234 YF dedicated recovery and service machines will generally have a refrigerant identifier inbuilt. This small feature dramatically reduces the risk of cross-contamination by sampling the refrigerant before removal, allowing the user to capture and isolate the recovered charge. Recovery and recharge operations are again very similar to R134A. Just be sure to follow the equipment and vehicle manufacturer's instructions. R1234 YF cylinders are easily identifiable as they are white in colour with a red band across the top. To prevent cross-fitting an R1234 YF cylinder to an R134A machine, the liquid valve attachment is machined with a left-hand thread compared to the right-hand thread used on the 134A cylinder. We need to use some special precautions in regards to storage of 1234YF cylinders, as we do with 134A cylinders. Keep them out of direct sunlight, below 50 degrees Celsius in a well-ventilated area, and keep them away from sparks or flame. No, just don't. R134A systems are not designed for flammable refrigerant, ever. R134A systems should never be converted to use R1234YF, as these earlier systems are unable to be converted to a level that satisfies the requirements of international standards SAEJ639 and SAEJ2842. The standards lay down specific requirements for system design. As we've mentioned before, an R1234YF evaporator is significantly stronger than the one you would commonly find in an R134A system. HFO R1234YF is here and we need to accept it. Vehicle manufacturers are installing it on every new car, so it's only a matter of time before you see one in the workshop and you need to repair it. So make sure you're ready for when this happens. Gear up and learn something new. As always, keep training. Thanks for watching.